All right, welcome everybody to a beginner's guide to the MPCNC. I have just recently finished this build the past weekend and I was a little bit lost as far as how to actually operate the machine as there was not a lot of information out there on what to do to actually get it running after you finish the build. So I downloaded all the software, installed all the programs, tensioned everything, set it all up the best I could, and now I was ready to try to press go and I didn't really know what to do. So. I'm gonna go over how to get you started, okay? So you're gonna to wanna to power on after you're sure your wiring's all good. Excuse the mess right here. We're still uh, early in the build process. Plug in the USB, boot up your computer, and boot the program uh, Repetier Host. I think that's how you say that, okay? And then in the upper left corner here, you're gonna press connect, and it's gonna load up, and it'll say idle on the screen, all right? You wanna make sure you do this with your uh, machine somewhere around the center um, of the envelope that way in case it does anything crazy um, You've got a little bit of buffer here Then you're gonna find these little arrows here, and we'll just start with the one millimeter increment I'm gonna press X to the left one And I hear the steppers turn on and when I'm doing that it's moving left. So let's move 10 Cool so this is moving the direction I want, and both steppers are going the correct direction. If that is not the case for you, you want to completely power down the machine by unplugging the power cable and unplugging the USB. Um, and then, and only then, should you switch the uh, position of your stepper connections here. So once I got mine figured out, I just put a little color code on here. That way, in case I ever get lost, I can plug them back in quickly. All right. So we'll check why. Awesome. All right, so our X and Y are good to go. So I've got the dual end stops programmed here. So the great thing about that is that if you have the position of your end stops here um, appropriately placed on the tubing, then when you run this, the machine will be perfectly square. So the command to do that, you're gonna come over here to the manual G code editor, type in G28X and press go. The machine is gonna run G28, which says find X0. Cool, found it. And then we're gonna type in G28. Y, enter. Awesome. So that will set X0 and Y0 um, in the machine's coordinate system right now. But it doesn't know where Z is right now. It's kinda, it's, it'll show a question mark if you have the LCD which I do not have an LCD plugged in right now. You don't need one because um, I accidentally broke mine. So hopefully I'll get a new one here pretty soon. So what I'm going to do for now is I'm just going to type in G92Z0. All right. And what that's saying is wherever you are right now, let's call that Z0. So at least it has a reference point. All right. So. Having zero, zero here in the corner doesn't really help me do a job um, because if I press go right now and I want and I define my coordinate system off of this point in cam, the machine's gonna run the operation from right here and that's no good. So what I will do now is I will manually jog the machine over to set my zero points to start the job. And as long as I leave the steppers engaged, the machine will be perfectly squared because I ran against the end stops. So we're just moving the Z down for the tool. You wanna to be slow and cautious when you do this. I recommend you start with the pen because if you break a pen, you will not be that disappointed. And let's see how close that is. And we got a little bit of space to go. less than a mil, so let's go to a smaller increment here, and you can just see what it's gonna put out here. Just be very careful when you're clicking, because if I press plus 50 right now, that's gonna ram that tool straight into that plastic, and that will be a bad day for something. So I'm on point one. And I can go a little bit closer. And that looks pretty close. So I know that my tool path initially is gonna cut apart out of this stock, not too close to that corner, so getting it exactly dialed up is not that big of a deal for me. So up here it's saying X is 70. 
because um, that's how far it thinks I've moved it here. So I'm gonna type in G92 X0 and redefine my X0 to the current position. Um, actually, no, I wanna do Y for this one. See, I'm gonna screw that up. All right, G92 Y0, cool. So my Y, which is my forward back, is set to zero right there. And my X is still messed up, right? My X still thinks that home is back where I squared it. So we're gonna move it left. Right about there. Got a little bit further to go. Call that another mill. You can go a little bit closer. That looks pretty close to me. All right, so now that's my X, G92, X0. Enter. All right, so let's back that off and move the Z up a bit. All right, so Z's up there. So now we can type in a code to check and see if our zero, zero is good. G1 commands a movement. If I do X0, Y0, Z0, we'll see where it goes. Moving a little slow, that's all right. All right, so that's where it thinks zero, zero is. That looks pretty aligned right there. And the Y looks pretty close to me. Cool. So I want it to be high right now because I'm gonna test my code before I turn the tool on. So I'll go up here, I'll press load, and I'll open my file. And now I'm ready to press print. So I created this file in Fusion, and I disabled the part that tells me to prompt me before I um, press go. So once I press go, it's gonna start running my code, and I'm just gonna press the start print button. <laughs> So I can see it's starting right here, away from my screws. That's good. That's a good test. Just kind of helixing in to the stock there. Clearing it out, moving on to the next part. All right, cool, I think that's gonna work. So I'll come over here and I'll press kill print. That might take a few seconds after you press kill just because it has, if it's already cached a command, it'll continue to run that command. So now I'm gonna come back over here and I'm gonna re-zero the Z to the actual start point here of my job. So let's get that moving down. And you can buy probes for this. I have not yet done that. I'm just doing this based on eyeball. So one thing that can help doing that is if you grab a flashlight here and put it on the other side of the tool sorry about that with the camera it is it'll cast a shadow which might be kind of hard to see let's see if I can darken that up a little bit cool so now when I zero this in I can watch that shadow shrink down That looks pretty close. Um, another thing you can do is use a piece of paper. Let's see if you can slide it under there. So I cannot slide it. Let's see what happens if I go up 0 0.2, 0 0.2. Still can't get it under there. All right, so that I can slide pretty clearly underneath, so that's too high. And a lot of this will depend on the parameters you set, right? Um, if uh, you're planning on cutting into your baseboard a little bit there, then... All right, so that got tight on that one there. So here I'll set G92, Z0, and then I'll immediately move this up. Okay, cool, toss that away, get my flashlight out of there so it doesn't break it. 
Now I'm ready to run my code with the router turned on. So what I'll do again is I'll do G1, X0, Y0, Z10. And watch it move. <clears throat> and I'm checking to make sure that the X and the Y0 are the same coordinate that I made my cam out of. Um, if it goes to the wrong spot, then this is obviously not gonna work. So let's see. That looks pretty good. The X might be a little bit off here. But I know that I've got about 20 mils of uh, clearance from the edge of my stock to where my path is gonna make, so that's good enough for me. So I'm ready to launch. So let's turn on the router. And start print. start, zero it up on the code, and uh, press go. Happy cutting. <laughs> 